It's important to know the difference between the standalone version of Complete Control software and the plug-in version. So right now, I do have Complete Control plugged in, and I have my digital audio workstation, GarageBand, up and running. I can control GarageBand from here without an issue. But you'll notice that when I move to mixer mode, I see my mixer, but if I tap MIDI mode or any of the other buttons, I'm not seeing any of the Complete Control browser stuff. All I can see are the MIDI ports and the MIDI channels. I can't see my contact instrument library and my complete control instrument library. And that's because I don't actually have the complete control software running. So it's don't confuse the control aspect of moving transport in your digital audio workstation with the actual software that will let you browse your library. So if I want to do that, I can open up an instance of the plugin. So I can just pick any of these software instruments in GarageBand and I can go through to the plugin area. I'll probably want to turn off all of the effects because I'm going to use the effects that are built into the complete control instrument. Now from here, I'll get out of ES2 and I'll go to complete control and go to my stereo mode. So this is sort of a commonly used instruments area. If you can't find yours there, you'll go to AU instruments, native instruments, and you'll find it there, complete control. Now, once you've got that running, you'll notice that these other buttons here are going to illuminate. It's gonna allow you to go to the browser and the plugin. So right away, see now it says, use the browser to load an instrument. So if I tap the browser button here, I can go ahead and browse my instruments. And again, the software communicates. So as I scroll through, you'll see the instruments appearing up on the top. So if I decide for that synth that instead of using a built-in GarageBand synth, I like to go ahead and use FM8, I can load it up. And now I've got my FM8 synth plugin running inside of GarageBand. And I don't have to have the window open. And that's the beauty of it. You don't have to have that window open to configure FM8. I can go to my different pages and adjust the sound right here from the keyboard while just keeping my tracks up on the screen. And that can be really handy. Now, if you don't want to run a DAW, if you want to just browse your sounds or perform live with complete control, that's possible as well. So I'll go ahead and quit GarageBand. And you'll notice that my browser goes away. And now I'm back to just the MIDI setup. So then I'd have to run the complete control software. Once I do, you'll see that once again, the browser comes back. So I can now go ahead and select what I want to select. I can load it and then it'll load up the instrument. The instrument will be reflected in the software and I'm good to go. You'll notice in my browser, what you're seeing here are a variety of different instruments. Complete Control will load up your reactor-based instruments and your contact-based instruments. Now, if you have wrapped contact instruments. In other words, they had an installer, maybe they came with Native Instruments Complete, or they're a third-party one that shows up in your contact library as a library, then it will show up here as a library as well. So if you take a look, you can see I've got all these first-party Native Instruments things, but I've also got some third-party ones that are going to show up as well. So if I scroll down, you'll see I've got like, you know, Novo, which is not necessarily made by Native Instruments, but it is a wrapped library and it has a contact library, so it shows up in my browser. It's not to say that you can't use complete control with unwrapped instruments, the instruments where you normally browse to the NKI file on your own. It's just a different approach you'll have to take, and we will check that out a little bit later on.